Welcome. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, it's a pleasure for me to bring um, and introduce three wonderful artists and activists uh, in Israeli society. Um, as you know, arts um, uh, is a very major role in our cultural progress. And um, as a person that works uh, and works with artists and uh, understand the importance of arts in our culture and our history, bo both looking backwards and forward, um, they, they're the artists that bring about the importance of what's happening today uh, in their own language. Um, I'm going to be introducing the artists each individually and uh, invite them up. Please uh, come up. Uh, Avner Feingelert. It's hard to <laughs> Thanks. I did it well. Um, Avner is a chair of Sapir Academy College School of Audio and Visual Arts and an award-winning independent filmmaker whose works have been screened around the globe. Um, Avner founded the Cinema South International Film Festival in 2002 in collaboration with the School of Audio and Visual Arts at Sapir College. The festival was established to address the mixed population of residents in the steroid area, including religious and secular Jews and Arabs, and to contribute to advancing pluralism in Israeli society. Fenner Lawrence is also a visiting professor at Columbia University in New York, the University of Haifa, and the Film and TV School of the Academy of Performance Arts in Prague. Welcome. Our next panelist um, is Mai Zari. Um, Mai is an independent choreographer and performer whose work has been presented in theaters worldwide. Zari creates stage works as well as site-specific work such as the piece Yes, created for the Tel Aviv Museum um, of Arts in 2015. She works in, co and in collaboration with other artists and out of interest to expand the boundaries of what dance could be and to create a shared platform of knowledge. Eventually, be shared within an audience. She's all, uh, one of the founders of the choreographic collective Mama, Mama Za, um, with whom she also developed projects of intervention in urban space. Welcome. Oh. Um, she also, uh, she's also very involved with the Academy of Music and Dance in Jerusalem, um, and uh, that's, that's wonderful to know that we are also very involved with that academy. Our next uh, speaker uh, or panelist is Asia Lukin. Please welcome Asia. Um, she's a member of the New Barbizon, a group founded in 2011 by five Israeli artists born in former USSR. Looking, <clears throat> the new Barbizon painters depict everyday life in Israel and uh, abroad, especially bringing exclude, excluded or forgotten individuals, uh, like foreign workers, asylum seekers, new migrants, from the background of the pictures to its foreground. Looking works mainly in two media, paintings and uh, stop motion animation, her paintings have been shown in Israel and internationally. Her films have participated in numerous festivals, including the um, Dog Festival, Zagreb Festival, Ottawa, and Croc, and others. Lockin studied fine arts in Betalel, Academy of Arts, um, in Jerusalem, and Ecole de Beaux Arts, uh, Royal Academy of uh, Royal Drawings, and she lives in, and works in Jaffa. Uh, welcome. Uh, in this introduction, I'm not going to talk nor on my films, neither on my academic research, which relate a lot to what I'm going to tell you today. Um, after a long time of traveling in the world, uh, living in London, New York, Tel Aviv, and studying film and psychology, I have decided to come back to the place where I was born a tiny Brazilian kibbutz in the south of Israel in the Negev that my parents established as pioneers who immigrate from Rio de Janeiro. 
I decided to come back home and do my films over there and not in Tel Aviv. In parallel, I had the chance to start teaching in Sapir College and initiate innovative film studies. I thought that this part of the south of Israel, although it is one of the poorest area and under constant bombing attack, is culturally the most precious and rich zone in Israel, at least for me. But maybe it was also my father's words before dying telling me that he would like me to come back at the kibbutz they established and repair all they have done wrong. Me and my colleagues have established 16 years ago new film school with 25 students. That's all. <clears throat> At the Negev between Gaza and Sderot, Rat and Etivot, a place nobody could believe it's possible to have a film school. I do not know why did I believe in such crazy idea. Probably it's an obsession which I possess exactly as I have when I do my films. Today, 16 years after, we are 400, 450 students from all over the, the country in five different BA curriculum, film, animation, television, sound design, and score music, dance, and cinema. Two MA programs, International Film Festival, it's the Road Cinematheque, Netivot of Akim and Rahat, the Bedouin city. And we are still believe that the, that the day, we, sorry, we are still believe that the day when we will make this festival in Zderot and Gaza, that for me was a significant place during my childhood and adult life. We are probably now the largest, films, the largest film school in Israel today. We changed the academic discourse in that field and brought new voices to the Israeli cinema that became very influ influential. Without us, they might remain unheard, those voices, I mean. Our festival, school, and other projects like Studio Darom, the International Co-Production Lab, is a creation against all odds of strong alternative center that became a game changer in the whole area and in Israel. The last few governments tried to close us by cutting the budget of our school and festival. They blamed us to be too radical by showing in films and talking about suffering of our neighbors in Gaza and not just ours. So far, they, <clears throat> they didn't manage. Today, and my dearest college, colleagues, have two new initiation. One is, in Sderot, one is Sderot as academic center, which means to move my school that I run for the last 16 years. With all the 450 students and 100 faculty members who are the best filmmakers and scholars in Israel, to the heart of Sderot. I will show you in a minute some slides to give the ideas of that. And the second is Regional Film Fund under the name of Ronit El Kabetz, the brilliant filmmaker and actress that was very close friends to of us, that passed away a year ago. This kind of fund that located at the south of Israel will reveal and support the unique voices from all over Israel, Jewish, immigrants, Palestinians, Bedouin, Druze, in order to give them a clear and strong voice all over the world. We already raise $150,000 every year to give it every year, and we want to have at least half a million dollars, and then we can change again the story of the Israeli cinema. I want to show you um, some slides from the idea about Sderot, uh, as a cultural center, um, an academic center. Mm -hmm. So this is the center of the road. You will see it in a minute from ground. And this is how it all started. This is the municipality, the place of the mayor. And this is the road in the 50s. 
Again, you see the same building that we see. Again, where is it? Where is the point? Yeah, this is the municipality. And the old days of Sderot, now this is how it looks today. <clears throat> we see the municipality, we see the Beta Am, and in a minute we will see also, this is again municipality, this is the piazza, and this is the old cinema that for 30 years it is closed. Last year in the, our Cinema South Film Festival, we opened it and screened, um, <clears throat> we opened it again. Um, some images. And now we see the paradox of the academic uh, life in Israel. You see this is Sapir College and this is the Roth. No connection at all between academic and community. We see it again. We see it's the Roth and we see Sapir. Um, Normally, the, the places in Israel, the academic places, centers, are um, surrounded by fences, and the community, it's not available. There is no access for the community. It's true also in Tel Aviv, Be'er Sheva, Haifa, and Jerusalem. There is no connection between communities and between uh, um, academic. And I want to change it. I want to do... Um, uh, a project that looks like that. Um, this is from above, or this is like, uh, so this is the old cinema, this is the, the municipality, and this is the Beta Am, and my friends, the architects, did this idea. First to dig, then to expand it, I'll do it fast, you will have the idea, and then you create a new center, which is both for the community and it's the place of the film, uh, the School of Visual and, and Audio and Visual Art of Sapir in the middle of Sderot. There was a moment that the mayor of Sderot said, okay, despite, although we, have, we share a diff uh, we think differently, I would be very happy to do a project like that. So it's in Hebrew, but you can see that this is animation, and this is film and television. This is the place for the dance, and this is the idea how you create a place like that. Now it's from above, a kind of presentation. And you just change the center of the road. You remember how it looks before and how we think to do it nowadays. If people will come to our Cinema South Film Festival, um, although it looks so um, poor, I mean the place, uh, nowadays it's still amazing. The vitality, the energy, people from all over the world come. And um, this is one of our vision, how to make this is the, of the road as a cultural center, um, again, against all odds, because everybody knows about the road, about Gaza, and this is what we believe. Thank you very much. Thanks again for having me here. I'm very excited to be here. Um, as introduced before, I'm a choreographer and a performer, dancer. I work within the experimental contemporary dance scene in Israel. And I thought to introduce a few projects of mine that represent my relation to today's topic of conference. So uh, the first project I'm going to talk about is called The Single Line. It's a project I made in 2011 within my collective of three, we are three choreographers. Um, and the project went like this. It's an intervention in the public space in which we connect two points. The first point is a city center. It's a point that is vivid and busy and popular within the specific city we do the project. The second point is a cultural center. It could be a theater, a museum, or other. It has to be a point, a cultural point, which is relevant for the local artists of the city. And our idea is the following. We 
uh, want to connect these two points, which are very often far from each other, not only geographically, but also mentally, culturally, in terms of state of mind. Culture tends to be on the outskirts or forgotten uh, to some extent. So what do we do? We are three people walking out to the streets with a wide uh, red tape that you can see in this picture. And we take a map, we put these two points, we draw a red line, and wherever the line goes, we go. So it crosses public spaces, private spaces, parks, roads, wherever it goes, we go. I will give an example. If the line hits a wall, we would have to find out where it goes out from on the other side of the wall exactly, and what would be the right direction. So in the end, we will end up ending in the cultural space. So it's an infinite line, so to say. It has no obstacles. And it demands us to knock on doors when we arrive to private spaces and introduce ourselves and explain our crazy idea and say that our line is meant to connect, to link. Our excuse is connecting these two physical points, but actually it's about connecting different populations, uh, different kinds of people and cultures, whoever we meet. And that by accepting and allowing us to put down this line in your own private space, you become part of this community or this movement. For us, it's a purely choreographic project because uh, it, we choose a direction and we have to physically do it. So the kind of interactions that happen are very interesting. They demand a lot of negotiations, uh, a lot of explaining what we do, etc. We end up entering very private spaces. This woman uh, is a Moroccan uh, religious woman in Jerusalem who ended up inviting us for tea and cookies, and we are having really quite amazing conversations. And for us, the power of this project is about the power of a meeting and conversation and intimacy. Um, it reveals also the relation of the people to their city, how they physically uh, locate themselves, what is their idea of the city center and the arts, are, are they connected to it or not. And there is something quite interesting, someone talked before about prejudice, about meeting three dancers that normally I think in the common life are known as weird people and suddenly seeing like quite normal people with whom you can have a conversation, it's quite a strong uh, experience. The other thing is also entering the prohibited places. Normally you're not allowed to do something, to, put a, to lay a line in a, in a sacred place, let's say, uh, like this. But uh, our power is uh, insisting and making it possible, even if it's just for a brief moment. The other thing this project does is that it reveals the city as a continuity. Uh, the city is very often perceived as many, many different boxes put side by side. We have our home, we have our working place, we have a few favorite places to hang out, and we have the way to go to that we know, and that is the fastest. And we want to propose that the way to go to places uh, is the essence of possibly life. And to somehow bring up the idea that the impossible might be an alternative or a place for imagination or fantasy for something else than what we normally live through. We did this project in Israel in three different cities, in Jerusalem, in Haifa, and in Petah Tikva. Each uh, place revealed very different architecture of the city as well as the different populations that live side by side. This is uh, in Jerusalem, an Ethiopian citizen. Uh, this is from the Ethiopian church uh, right in the heart of Jerusalem, which allowed us to lay the line as long as we put our shoes off. So there are different traditions, uh, cultural traditions that come uh, front, which is our interest. Um, and this is in the house of Eliezer ben Yehuda, the inventor of the Hebrew language or the reviver. Uh, the house is currently uh, owned by uh, 
Jewish Frenchman who is very proud of having this house and he was extremely happy as that we knocked here, although he was not very prepared for a visiting <laughs> community, but he and, and let us enter and we had a very interesting conversation. Um, the other aspect of my work is stage work. Uh, I do performing arts and uh, what I find interesting in dance and in choreography in the way I perceive it is that the starting point is the body, which what can be more political than the body? Um, we all have one, which is quite a thing. And uh, no matter where we come from, which color, which culture, we have a body. And um, I'm interested in the different possibilities of bodies to interact or through uh, performing arts, how can I expose somehow a possible different body? We are very used to use our body or normally as a very functional thing. We take it, it takes us around the world, we eat with it, we use it to <laughs> grab stuff, but it could be so many other things. And I think these so many other things is a, is a big uh, pool of imagination and wonderful things that can help us. So these uh, images are from a site-specific work I made in 2015 for the Tel Aviv Museum of Art, together with a vocal artist called Michal Oppenheim, who is lying on me. And in this work, we dealt very much, which is my topic for the last couple of years, with the female body, with women, and the body image that could be presented of women. Uh, I find that we are bombarded by a body image of women that is very reduced, very two-dimensional, and we take it already somehow for granted that that's what a woman looks like on the media. But I really want to use the stage and the performing arts that I do um, to propose a much more complex um, representation of the female body. Um, I deal very much with the categorization. I think it's a tool we all use in our daily life. We see someone and we immediately categorize him or her to be that. And I play with it in my work. I try to propose a certain representation and then when I feel there is a certain interpretation of other, ah, these kind of women, I try to shift it. So for example, if it becomes very lyrical, I would try to gradually transform it to become very anim animalistic and rough so that what you think is not what it is exactly, which I feel is a tool for general life. Um, I see the power of what I do not so much about being beautiful or entertaining. I see it more as a disturbance. I want to disturb with what I do. And even if it's just for a very slight moment, uh, I find it significant because I think being disturbed or having a question um, is a very intimate moment between a person and oneself. And even if it's just for a brief moment when people in the street see us three crazy people laying this red line and they ask themselves, what are we doing? And they get curious and they ask a few questions. I think this moment has an impact in the long run. Uh, currently, I work on a production that will come up in September as part of Diver Festival, which is a cutting-edge uh, dance festival in Tel Aviv. And I work with a female choir. We have five women on stage that we are physically active and vocally active. And uh, the point of this work is very much literally to give space to the voice of women, which I find interesting the name of this panel, The Voice of the Arts, because we use voice and our bodies, and I think that women have a lot to say. We saw it also here after Trump's election, and I think the qualities that the feminine can bring to society is extremely valuable in our times, and we need to learn how to listen to it because it's a different kind of quality than the masculine one we are very used to. Um, thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Asia, and uh, I'm very thankful to you for inviting uh, for the invitation to participate here and uh, to present 
uh, our painting group um, of five women who work and uh, live in Israel. You can see them here. Uh, the name of the group is New Barbizon, which is uh, derived from the French uh, group uh, uh, that worked in the uh, middle of 19th century in France. Uh, this group of artists were the first uh, ones who uh, came out of the studios and uh, started to work from the observation and to paint the real life and uh, landscapes and farmers uh, and etc. Uh, our environment is uh, quite different from them, as you can see. Uh, and the heroes of our works are different as well, but uh, the concept of uh, being uh, um, uh, involved uh, with um, observational painting and uh, uh, translating it, uh, uh, the life through it uh, is quite common. Um, we, we were all born in uh, a former Soviet Union in different parts of it uh, and uh, had uh, a common uh, Soviet childhood and uh, um, uh, education. We studied uh, in, uh, all of us were studying in uh, a Russian art school we, which has uh, quite a strict education, uh, very ac academic and uh, gives uh, all the basics of uh, realistic painting. You can see some examples. Um, and then uh, 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 one day we arrived to Israel and uh, we met totally differ different reality, cultural reality. Um, most of uh, Russian artists uh, who arrived uh, to Israel uh, at this time uh, had kind of a cultural shock because uh, in Russia at this, at this period of time nobody ever heard about contemporary art or um, conceptual art. So a Russian immigrant artists ha had to decide whether they are uh, going to refuse this new cultural reality or to accept it. Um, most of us, four of us actually, uh, um, decided to accept it. We, uh, some of us were making uh, conceptual art, some video art, etc. But uh, at some point, after many years of uh, making uh, like different kinds of art, uh, each of us, in her own way, uh, came back to the observation, painting from the observation. One of us, uh, uh, one um, Zoe Cherkasky, whose work you see in the middle, uh, who was at this time qu quite a uh, well-known uh, and successful Israeli artist making uh, conceptual art, um, decided to organize a group. So she found us and uh, we became uh, a group. We uh, started to go uh, to the street and to paint uh, from the observation. In Israel, uh, for us, it wasn't that much simple to, to, to be uh, painters uh, who are painting from the observation because um, uh, there was a kind of uh, uh, almost dictatorship of uh, conceptual art. And if you are uh, a painter, and especially a painter of Russian roots, you are considered kind of a, s a second-hand painter. So uh, working as a group, we, we had, uh, we f felt m much more powerful. We started to go to the streets, and um, uh, um, one of our main uh, uh, interest in painting is going to the uh, communities that are quite isolated uh, in Israel and to the districts that we have never interacted before. Now you can see the, this is a district, Naveshanan, which is uh, a neighborhood where live uh, Sudanese refugees. 
uh, for us, it was uh, like revealing uh, a new world when we came to, to such uh, places. As well as for them, it was uh, revealing a new world because for so some of them have never really talked to Israeli people, perhaps except of the policemen, yeah? Uh, while working there, our work has changed. Uh, in the beginning, we, we felt they're a bit distant, but um, the closer, uh, the more we work there, the, the closer they, they became to us, and you can see how uh, it feels in our work. Uh, they, they became closer and closer and closer, <laughs> and some of us uh, uh, ended up uh, with the portraits. <laughs> Um, and uh, I, 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 I want to represent you another project that we were involved uh, in. Uh, this project was in a uh, um, central bus station in Tel Aviv. Uh, we uh, received a space where we made a kind of uh, public art which was um, describing the uh, bu central bus station atmosphere. We, were, uh, we took it a bit as a game and we also work there like a street artists uh, making portraits for 50 shekels. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this, we also were painting them, and this uh, gave us uh, an opportunity to come out of the bubble of, uh, you know, uh, artistic society and uh, to discover new social groups in Israel. We, we also traveled qu quite a lot in Israel. Uh, for example, uh, this is our car, <laughs> how it looks with our paintings. Uh, for example, we came to the Bedouin village, uh, which is called Hura. Uh, this was also a totally new experience for us, as well as for them, because uh, they've never really seen many artists before, and especially women artists. Uh, here you can see some examples. So, so uh, th this experience uh, gave, uh, gave us um, an opportunity to, to communicate with this previously unknown for us community. I'm just showing a bit uh, of our other uh, um, paintings in our, our other spaces. And um, we also went to different kibbutzim and other places in Israel. And actually, uh, the painting for all of us is a way to communicate with uh, different social groups that live in Israel and uh, uh, perhaps to understand them better and to know them better. And we all hope that we can um, uh, show our own, uh, share our knowledge and uh, some understanding with uh, our audience. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all your presentations. Um, so after understanding more about your art and your practice, uh, what has been some of the more rewarding or challenges uh, of your practice um, as you have been so socially active with your community, with your, with, uh, at large? And can you, if you tell us like some of how your everyday practice has been rewarding or challenging for you? I was concentrated in, the, in the, this kind of initiation of film school that I initiated 16 years ago in a film festival, but it's all connected to my journey in life, which is, uh, you know, I started it very late in my life, and in the last 16 years I did uh, six docu long documentary films and PhD in London and the film school, film festival, and to me it's a long process of a long journey how to get into the heart of a society. But a society, it's not just, you know, something outside of me, it's not external. Society, it's the soul of the, the soul of the earth, the soul of the, of the, of the people, soul of the... And when I decided to come back and to be part of this community and thinking that the, let's say, the old immigrants from 
from uh, Arab countries, North Africa, or the new immigrants from Ethiopia or former Soviet Union republics, mainly the Islamic. These are the people who are coming, at, they are not coming from Moscow or St. Petersburg, the people who are coming in the south, in the border of Gaza. And for me, that I spoke, I said that it's the richness, because I really learned so much of that. And uh, it's part of my life, the, the, the values of coming back to the south and live there, where I was born, of course, but it's the generosity, the warmth, the honesty, the dignity, um, the liberty, all these things that there were ver they were very, very, that's other, these are the people, that, these are the things that are very important, the values. Nowadays, I mean, the end of a process of a new two long documentary films on the West Bank, um, in Judea Desert, the West Bank between Hebron and Orad. And I've been living for five years with uh, two families, one Palestinian uh, shepherds and one uh, Jewish, se Jewish settlers. And it's always, I think, look from another perspective. And this is the main thing for me, even to go to the road or being in El Majaz or other places in Mitzpah Yair, or filming in the past between the fishermen from Gaza and fishermen from Israel, settlers who cooperate and work together, it's always to look from another perspective, without judgmental. And then you see the heart of the soul, which is for me always a revelation that support, support my life. And I think this is when you show it, when you speak about it, when you reveal it, when you yourself reveal it, and when you give the, the stage to reveal, something is changed in life, in society, between people. We start to believe in ourselves and the values that we can share. I think uh, when you talk about rewarding, I'm thinking about uh, that it always before ha being rewarded, I think there is a lot of resistance. Or like to arrive to a moment of connection, I think there is a resistance of what of the unknown or being a bit uh, like cautious. And at least, for example, in the uh, project with the line, I was very happy that it happened. It was not planned. We were not uh, planning to do things uh, outdoors, but somehow it, it, it ended up like this. And this was... Um, for me, very uh, meaningful to go out um, because I realize also how much relating to boxes that I was talking about before, also the art world is a certain box which has its borders and I, I get exposed then to specific kinds of audiences which vary but they are specific somehow. So the, it was very uh, significant for me to suddenly meet people that might not go to the theater normally. And when we actually manage to meet, to go over the resistance, once they realize also we don't want to sell anything and we don't want anything from them, so we manage just to have a conversation, that's a real uh, meaningful moment. Uh, that's the intimacy I was talking about before. Um, and it takes a lot of um, conviction and work to get there. And I, I feel it also through my stage works. Once people uh, allow themselves, and that's my work also to create the condition for that, to, to not be um, um, yeah, scared of, of what they don't understand or something like this, but it, it becomes the, the space of the performance or after the performance just a, a space of reflection and being there, of presence. Um, I find it very, uh, very rewarding. <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, well, uh, uh, well, uh, um, one of the most, uh, perhaps, uh, most important things we are, when we are coming to the communities where we are um, painting is uh, to interact with uh, the people and to. Uh, to talk to them, and uh, sometimes it feels that we are uh, maybe the first people who are uh, showing them and uh, telling them about uh, existence of art. Uh, uh, for example, when we were in um, uh, refugees area, 
uh, some people were just asking what what are you doing uh, what is this and uh, um, so perhaps uh, this is quite a big ch uh, challenge for us to to bring uh, to them the art and to uh, to show what is this and um, um, yeah, perhaps this is the biggest challenge. Another one is quite an uh, artistic challenge, uh, which is uh, just to be adequate uh, to what we see uh, and to what we feel and uh, to our time and uh, to our uh, identity and uh, um, and the roots and. Um, uh, how uh, each of us answers this question in its different uh, way, uh, how to be adequate to, to, to for example, to, to time where we, uh, when we live. Because uh, there, there are not, uh, there are p probably no answers. Uh, sometimes uh, it feels uh, that, uh, well, <laughs> that perhaps color can be uh, something that is uh, adequate. Um, um, so you you all have a way of engaging community at large, but then you also come from your own personal background. How do you feel that your individual identity, as where you come from, plays a larger part in as artists? And how do you bring it about? Is it something you're aware of on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, and does it help you to understand yourself and your practice? And to communicate, or what is, how does it play a role for you? Um, for me, it takes a big role. It plays a big role. Um, by going back to my home, to this Brazilian kibbutz, was in a way to accept myself as more Jewish and more Brazilian. <laughs> and um, which means the openness the wide horizon and to observe life in from different perspective and less judgmental i think it's much more brazilian than israeli okay um i think as a as a son of immigrants who arrived in israel and um, my parents came from rio de janeiro from from my grandparents came from the shtetl in Polona and Shepetovka in Ukraine, and they were students of Bialik and Chernichovsky, running away, escaping, and they arrived in Brazil in 20, 1921. And from 1921, my parents arrived in 1955 in Israel and established a kibbutz. Um, as a son of immigrants, you're always a bit uh, ashamed that you are not really Sabra, you are not really Israeli, and you really try to fulfill your life as Sabra and Israeli going to the best uh, commando you need in the army and to be more Israeli than Israeli. And then after a while you feel, oh, something is wrong. For me, the most important thing was when my father died and I started to do um, a, a journey. For 13 years I've, I've been filming a journey um, diary journey um, from my from the kibbutz, <coughs> sorry, to Istanbul, Odessa, and those uh, shtetl in Ukraine, go back to Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, back and all these things, and I think that made um, for me that change the identity of being more Jewish and, more and less Israeli, while before that I really tried to be more Israeli than Israeli. And nowadays when I run in this film school uh, with 450 students that come from all over the, pl the places, I think um, that our main advantage is wide horizon openness and always be in a, not to be afraid in process and failure, not try to get a result and to be so efficient, just waste the time and see where this process take you. And I'm very proud that we managed to have also results in this film school and festivals and all that, and also in my process. But the idea is always the process and learn and be in the failure. Um, for me, I think, um, 
I realized I wanted to make dance quite early on. Uh, my, my focus was not so much on dancing, but on composing dance from when I was 14 years old. It was clear for me. And I, I was studying in the normal kind of frameworks in, Israel, in Tel Aviv uh, for a young dancer. And I was always told that I am not a, uh, I'm not a typical Israeli dancer. And I was uh, always uncomfortable and trying to understand what, what does it mean. Uh, the common denominator of dance at the time, m much more than now, was Batsheva. And the kind of body that Dohad Naharin, the choreographer, made, which was a, a very interesting representation of the Israeli society, very grounded, very passionate, very uh, impulsive. And I was not that. And I left Israel because of that, I think. I left quite early. I was 17 and a half years old, and I left to Europe to study. And I felt much more comfortable there uh, to develop my own skills as a dancer. And it made me realize that actually the house I grew up in, only w once I left, was my mom was Polish. She came to Israel on only when she was nine. And she always, uh, I think, the atmosphere in the home was half European in a sense. The, the kind of culture, the mentality, or the gestures were uh, of European nature, half. Um, and I, I came to terms with it only after a couple of years when I lived in Europe. Um, I, I was in Europe for 12 years, and I came back to Israel three years ago uh, with the decision that uh, I want um, to be able to do my art, which is not typically Israeli, <laughs> in Israel, because I think it's meaningful to do it there. Uh, one thing that I really realize is about time, the use of time uh, in Israeli dance and maybe in the culture in general. There is no time. It's always very quick. There is no time for things to develop, I feel, or like um, it's the way people work, it's the way they think, and it's the way they compose their work. And that's one thing I really made myself like as a point, I take time. And also when I teach, I give a lot of time for self-discovery and realization, um, not to be so much a goal-oriented or product-oriented, but to allow time for reflection. Um, so that's relating to your question. Okay. Um. Uh, 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 I came uh, from uh, Russia, and I was a Russian immigrant. I came from Russia when I was 15 years old. Uh, and um, actually, uh, I really, as a, a young immigrant, I really tried to integrate and to become a pure Israeli uh, uh, human being. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I went. Uh, I, I finished uh, school and uh, an army, and uh, I went to Bezalel Academy of Art in Israel. And um, in this academy, uh, uh, I tried really to forget uh, that I had a Russian uh, education in painting. Uh, I made. Uh, Big uh, uh, abstract uh, sculptures, etc., etc., etc. It was uh, really um, uh, at this time it's in Betzel to be uh, uh, to, to make art and be, and, uh, and to have uh, ra uh, Russian roots was uh, really hard because. Um, uh, there was kind uh, it's especially at these years, not now, but then uh, it was kind of a stereotype of Russian artists who is, who is kind of uh, never open to any new waves and uh, only sitting in his room and making um, still lives all the day from the morning to the evening. So, um, um, uh, so uh, uh, me and my friends, we really tried to to to, f to forget our uh, roots. But uh, at some point, uh, we came back to it, all of us. And uh, being now working now as a group, we are st starting to research uh, f from the beginning uh, 
uh, all we didn't knew about Russian or Soviet art, and uh, we are bringing it now to Israeli art scene in some way. And um, yeah, we are, we are not anymore uh, so much uh, shy about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of you. Um, I know that you all have uh, been leaders in your um, in, in the practice that you have created, um, Avner, you by doing the filmmaking and then being uh, very active in creating the festivals and the university and the program in Sterot and connecting with the, with the different immigration or immigrant population and communities. And uh, my you by connecting performance in the streets and connecting architecture and geography uh, with the people and making them more aware of um, the people living in similar areas and connecting them to the um, outskirts, the center to the outside. And Asya, you by uh, also showing you as an immigrant your voice in connecting and responding to other immigrants' voices and other um, communities. Uh, I think arts, uh, as you also said, my, uh, was very, very important to me is about disturbance. It's about bringing awareness. And I know artists um, hit different uh, challenges in uh, wanting to quiet them. Uh, if you can say, in, we have a very short time, in one sentence, which is kind of, uh, what would be um, a way of you um, not allowing that, uh, any, anything to stop you? I don't know if you can answer it, but I, I, had, I wish I had more question, uh, time for that, but uh, what is that disturbance that you want to bring in that um, you might think there will be a is, is, What is your word? What is your disturbance you're going to create? Um, I think that my way is always going to the void, going to the unknown, not afraid to be that. And this is, where the, this is the place where I take my student, and it's always revealed the darkness. And darkness is something very scary, first of all for the person who is in the journey, but later is the people that are around him because they have no idea what is happening there. But I think if you go with that, you, you get to a point where there is a new revelation. And for me, this is the most important. And of course, this is the hardest obstacle always, because the void and the unknown is such a, such a threat. I'm not sure I understood your question, but I'll go anyway. <laughs> um, I would just say that um, I think um, I, I try to aim at uh, the possibility to question what we see or what we perceive, and that's where I try to work on or to allow space for that. And the other thing is that I find um, where we are right now, uh, people get more and more distant from their bodies or from experience or from meeting each other. And it's harder and harder to get people to see performance, but I find that having a live performance and meeting in person is extremely relevant, even more in our times. And that's, in a way, my topic. Well, uh, I'm also not sure about understanding of the <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, but, um, well, uh, perhaps the most important thing for me is uh, to be adequate to myself and uh, to the reality around me and uh, to bring it uh, to the audience. And uh, being adequate uh, means sometimes uh, uh, this moment of disturbance uh, that you were talking of, of, about. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we, have, we have some questions from the audience. Um, please do two. Can I go first or you want to go first? So I'm, first of all, thank you so much. I mean, really, what a phenomenal panel. First, let's say thank you, really, really, thank you. 
Each of you have brought such important perspectives, and I'm a political scientist, so I, that's the window through which I look at the world. So I wanted to ask each of you, what is the political nature of your work? Because I see a lot of it in each of your work, but I'd love to hear from each of you, what is the political nature or political message that could be drawn out from your work? Wow. This is, um, Thanks for coming to my help. <laughs> 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 That's what I wanted to say. Uh, when we speak about political, I think it's uh, you always ask, are you leftist, rightist, or things like that, which are not relevant for me, not at all. I think the idea of civil society is how individuals create alternative reality by their doing from, their, from the bottom of their heart, not from, the, um, not from any either other interest. It's from what you believe. And if you, I think in art, you're always kind of utopian. That's why you are so criticized, because you always believe in such an utopian life and utopian society, and you fight for that. So when I do um, a film festival or a film school in the road between Gaza and the road and between... And I go, I, until 2001, I went a lot to Gaza. And I lived there. And I tried to do a collaboration. And I, my, one of my films uh, about fishermen from both sides, I said, instead of being in traffic jam to Tel Aviv, I, I walk with collaboration and do the editing and a co-production with Gaza. Those days, it was Ramatan and uh, Kassam, uh, with Kassam Ali and that also immigrate from London and try to have a broadcast in, in Gaza, but Arafat didn't let him, and we, and we began to cooperate. But I also think that I cooperate with the, one of the main obstacle of my program, in the road, it's the, the rabbis, in the road. While the mayor really wanted, but he, beca he belongs to the, to the Jewish Orthodox, the key, no, it's like, it's more than that, it's, the, it's, it's like the settlers, the same idea. And he told me, I really want it, but I cannot do that. The rabbi is against it, so I said, but you know, um, a city like the Roth, okay, it's now rich, you are entrepreneur, you did a lot. I mean, not rich, but you established so many things. But the really, really important thing is culture, is education, and if you do that, <clears throat> you change a place. And you have a very strong Torahic, um, Jewish Orthodox center for, and if you have a very strong cultural center, we can bridge and it's time to talk. And then you are really leader. So for me, this is the idea, how you bridge between so many different approach as and you contain different narratives, I mean, political, artistic, whatever. And this is my goal, this is my way of thinking. When I do my films and I go alone in the West Bank with my old car, <laughs> sleeping in the desert without knowing what is going to happen, everybody said it's too dangerous, and I still believe in human being, and I'm, and I'm still alive, and I'm there. And uh, this is what I try to do. This is my politics. Um. So, specifically, for example, on the line project, I can say that um, uh, the idea of taking a line was a very conscious decision of taking this element which we are so used to as seeing as a separating element, a border, a red line. And we specifically chose that in order to say uh, the line in itself does, does not want to separate necessarily. It can do other things. It, it just depends how we look at it. So this line can also connect. That's what the line does. I mean, we learn in school, it's a point and a point, and you draw a line. But then it ends up <laughs> saying all these things, and us not even being able to be reflective about it and putting a question mark about it. So in that sense, this project I find very political. Um, and I think, in general, I deal a lot with hierarchy or how power is distributed um, physically in my dance works, how, uh, how, how the different bodies interact or what kind of power relations and how can they 
they switch between them, the performers themselves, but also between performers and audience, which is something I always play, which might be inconvenient to experience also, but it relates to the disturbance I was talking about before. I'm interested in these moments that you are not necessarily knowing how to react, and you have to find your way of dealing with it, which I feel it has to do a lot with responsibility, and that in, in life we have to deal with our responsibility, not only from what we heard from other people, and then we just continue doing the same as our parents or whatever, but in a way to re uh, reposition the question towards myself and say, do I want that or that? For me, art is a way of compassion and um, being compassionable, compassionable uh, s uh, through painting. Uh, it's uh, also the way to communicate with uh, very different uh, uh, communities and um, uh, of and to bring together uh, various minorities, uh, whether it's uh, um, Palestinian or Bedouin or uh, Jewish Orthodox, not a long uh, time ago, we started to make paintings in the Mea Sharim, which is a very Orthodox uh, district in Jerusalem. So, yes, um, uh, um, I don't know about uh, much about politics, but uh, I know much about compassion. Uh, uh, and this. <laughs>